Hi folks, I'm going to do a deep dive um, and sort of an immersion in some of the knowledge about Agaricon that we have present and the potential of Agaricon for many new discoveries. The first evidence of Agaricon we have is from Dioscorides in 65 AD in the very first Materia Medica in which Dioscorides described us as Elixirium ad longum vitum, the elixir of long life, specifically used for treatment of consumption, later thought to be known as tuberculosis. Well, indigenous peoples also revered this mushroom and would carve this mushroom into grave guardians to help shamans go into the afterlife. Now, whether you're a physician or a shaman, you hold in common the concept that diseases can be caused by the invisible. Shamans will call them spirits, doctors will call them microbes. And in this case, we know this mushroom has very, very potent antibacterial, antiviral properties. We're with Dr. Scott Franzlau at the University of Illinois Chicago Tuberculosis Research Center. We have discovered through bioguided fractionation, taking the mycelium and these mushrooms, and by doing a decision tree of using solvents, we go down water, it being the most sol uh, polar of solvents, using hexane, which is a non-polar, and then we test both those fractions to see if the increase in anti-tuberculosis activity occurred. And then we followed the decision tree that leads us to increased potency. They did this over several years, and then we finally found a group of chlorinated coumarins that are published in the Journal of Natural Products. And these chlorinated coumarins are highly active against XDR, multi-drug resistant strains of tuberculosis. Moreover, working with the BioShield program, the U.S. Defense Department, we discovered that the mycelial extracts, just simple mycelium put into water and ethanol, we took the supernatant, after the polysaccharides that precipitated, the supernatant, the clear fluid at the top of these vessels, had within them extremely potent properties against pox viruses, herpes, as well as flu viruses. Working with the University of Mississippi School of Pharmacy with Dr. Samir Ross and his team, they did bioguided fractionation, and lo and behold, we found two novel anti-smallpox molecules. And these molecules are more potent than cydofavir, and these molecules are open sourced because hopefully we'll never have a smallpox pandemic. The anti-flu molecules have not been discerned, nor the anti-herpes molecules. But the point is this mushroom is a deep reservoir of pharmacologically active agents, dually active against flu viruses and pox viruses and herpes viruses, as well as against tuberculosis bacteria, staph bacteria, and E. coli. And I think this mushroom presents a fantastic bio shield of defense. Ancient peoples knew this empirically through thousands of years of experimentation, and now modern science is understanding this better. This is the form that's a brown form, and it goes into the quinine form, the white form. And behind me was a white form of agaricon known as the ghost form. Now the quinine form is reported throughout the literature, being used in tinctures, etc. We do have one anecdotal report from a First Nations shaman who ingested the white form in large quantities and reported temporary blindness. So I caution people not to make extracts out of the fruit bodies. The mycelium is a whole other matter, and this mushroom is considered to be endangered in some ecosystems because it's only associated with old growth forests of the Pacific Northwest, Northern California, Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia, and a few sky islands in Austria and Slovenia uh, in the Alps. So another example that the biodiversity of our ecosystems have within them a wealth of potential solutions uh, to the diseases that afflict us today and the diseases that afflict us in the past. So I think this mushroom has enormous potential for further research. We're dedicated to exploring it more and the latitude, the elasticity of applications of this mushroom, I really speak to uh, its uh, intrinsic value. That's it. Thank you very much.